Drawing lines in Revit is accomplished in individual views and is done by using the line tool found underneath Annotate up here on the ribbon. And here we can see this is where the detail line tool resides. Now in order to be able to use this tool, we first need to start thinking about, okay, what view do we want to be in in order to be able to first draw these detail lines out? Where I would like to be able to add detail lines to is going to be in a section of our staircase. So since our staircase currently doesn't have a section, we're going to need to place a section line into our staircase. So up here underneath the View tab, because we're going to be creating a section view, we're going to select on Section. Next, I'm going to zoom in here, and then click once just to the right-hand side of the staircase, then move over, and then click again. Next, I want to be able to see the other side of the staircase too, and right now it's pointing in this direction, so I can't. So we're just going to click on the little double arrows right here in order for us to be able to see this section looking in that direction and be able to see the entire staircase. Since the section has just gotten placed, a good practice is to be able to come over on the left-hand side underneath the project browser and then try renaming this section to be something that makes maybe a little bit more sense to us. Now I can tell you from experience that whenever the last section that you place, it'll automatically try to place it there at the bottom of the list, or in this case, since we've already done a section one and two, it's going to place this as being section number three, so I know that that's the one we need to work with. And since we just cut a section through our staircase, let's just keep this simple and just call this section stairs. So to do that, all you have to do is right-click where it says section three, come up here to rename, and then we'll rename this stairs and click on OK. Now we have a section that happens to be named Stairs. If we wanted to double click on the little circular shape, we could go to that view, or we can just double click where it has Stairs, and it'll take us directly to our stair section. Now, the next thing we need to decide, is this the view that we want to be able to do our uh, different sort of detail work in? And frankly, at this scale and how big of a view this is, this is probably going to be some really fine work that we're going to be doing. It's going to be down here at the bottom of the steps. As a result of that, this probably isn't the view that we really want to be in either. But we wouldn't have been able to create this callout view, which is an enlarged detail view, without creating the section first. So now that we're in the section, we're going to come up here and create a callout view. In order to be able to blow the bottom half of our staircase up so that we can see it at a much larger scale. Now we're going to go ahead and just click once right here, move over, and once we have a circle roughly this shape, go ahead and click again. By doing this, it's automatically created another view, in this case underneath sections, and it's being called Call Out of Stairs. The reason why it's called that is because we are currently underneath the stairs, it was created in stairs, and it just named it Call Out because, well, technically it's a little call out bubble that we added to it. In this case, we could leave it as call out of stairs, but let's go ahead and rename this as well, and we're just going to call this detail at stairs. So you'll remember, just select on it, right click, rename, and detail at stairs. One last thing before we go to that, I really hate it when my call out bubbles are inside of a floor. It makes them very hard to read whenever they're actually finally placed onto a sheet. So what we need to do is select on the line that's associated with this call out, Click on the little circular shape and hold the mouse button down and just pull this up so that the call out is no longer right there in the middle of that floor. Now that we've done the cleanup, let's go ahead and go to this detail at stairs. All right, now we can see this enlarged detail view here. But really, a quarter inch equals a foot probably isn't big enough for what we're trying to accomplish here. So let's go ahead and change this to be three quarters of an inch equals a foot. We can now see that the line work is automatically adjusted for us. It's not as thick as it was. And it just looks like a nice sort of prettier thing to be able to draw inside of. And when I use the term pretty, really what we're discussing is that it's much easier to read and it's going to communicate the design that much easier. So now that we finally have done all this work, well, we can finally come up and start to use our line work tools. So underneath annotate, we're going to move over to detail line. Now our detail lines have a few different options associated with them, such as straight lines, draw rectangles, circles, polygons, arcs, ellipses. 
If you've used other drafting programs in the past, you've probably have had all these different shapes available to you as well. In this case, in the case of Revit, they combine it all inside of one command, and it allows you to just select detail lines and then pick whatever the appropriate shape is off of the list. Also, we'll see that there's some different line styles associated over here, such as center line, demolished, hidden. Also, there's different thicknesses, thin line, medium lines, wide lines. Now, we're not going to get too much into the actual creation of these at this point, but in just a moment, I will show you where those settings are located at. For this detail, though, I will say that we will be using medium lines to be drawing the rest of our objects. Now, so that you know where that property comes from, underneath the Manage tab here, toward the middle of your screen, you're going to have a button that says Additional Settings. And if you select on Additional Settings, about halfway down the list, we're going to see such things as line styles, line weights, and line patterns. Line weights, that's your thicknesses. Line patterns, that's center, hidden, dashed, your standard drafting line types. Line styles, if we click on the little plus after clicking on line styles, we can see this is a list of those same kind of lines that we had on our list that we could choose from. It also has the line weights, and the line styles from those other two menus I just pointed out. Finally, pretty much everything we've seen inside of Revit has either been black or blue so far. And the reason why most of these colors have been in place is because of the line color that shows up here underneath the line styles. For right now, we're just gonna leave this the same. So we'll just go ahead and click on cancel to that. Gonna go up to the green tab up here. It says modify and place detail lines. Medium lines is gonna be just fine for us. We're gonna zoom in here and pick a point. Eh, I'm going to actually, in this case, just go just slightly to the right of the middle. I'm going to pick right about here and then draw a line up in this direction. Now this line, what it's going to be indicating is it's going to be indicating a piece of rebar that's going to be coming up from that point all the way on up the stairs. And we could always use our text tools to be able to note this after the fact if we wished and just kind of move it up to the end. You can see how this has the medium line weight. This would be about the equivalent of the thin lines. Next, let's add some more rebar looking shapes, in this case, little circles. So once again, to do that, come up here, detail line. This time, pick circle. Move down to right around this area right here. Click once, and then just make a little quarter inch circle. Okay, if you'd ever, is just snapped just a little bit too tiny. Every once in a while, you'll get this message. This says element is too small on screen. Pretty much it means is if it ends up getting to be less than maybe a 16th of an inch, then it's going to say it's too small on the screen. So you might need to be able to make that just a little bit bigger. So once again, we'll just come down here to the circle shape, click again, kind of make a circle. It's just a tiny bit bigger, or maybe even zoom in so we can actually see it. Click again. I can see this is a quarter inch. That's the size that I want in. Now we could continue to do that all the way on up if we wished, or we could just select on that, use the copy command, make sure that multiple is checked, pick the intersection of there, and just keep picking the intersection of, intersection, intersection of, all the way on up, repeating that rebar shape all the way on up the model. Now the reason why we're doing this as opposed to actually using the rebar tools in the program is that there are going to be occasions where there's really no reason to model something three-dimensionally, unless you're going to be taking the quantity of every piece of steel that's inside of the stairs. And frankly, in every project, you might not need that capability. So you might use the line work tool instead of the three-dimensional modeling tools in order to be able to uh, create these kinds of conditions. Also, if you decide to use line work instead of the 3D tools, it's going to keep your model leaner, lighter, and keep things faster than it having to process big three-dimensional entities. Drawing detail lines in Revit is used to illustrate conditions that otherwise wouldn't need to be modeled inside of the program.